Hi, can can I check if everyone can hear me? Hi. Okay, uh, let me share screen. Stop sharing screen, hold on. Can I check if everyone can hear me? Hello. Hi, Tussar. Uh, Hi, Digby. Hi, Taufik. Can I check if everyone? Okay, you can hear me, but can you see my screen? Hi, Gerald. Hi. Hi, Ellen. Hi, Ariane, Derek. Hi, Chu, Francis, Gerald, Hans, Leah, Jovita, Lillian, Marina, uh, SK Vu. I'm just whoever I see. Morning. You guys can hear me. Can I check if you guys can see my screen though? My screen says the Ultimate Forex Trading Masterclass, Tick Mail, 2023. No screen, not yet. You can, I can, you, okay, you can see me, but you cannot see my screen. Okay, let me try to share screen again. Um, why? Why is it not sharing? Okay. Um, I think I know what's wrong. Okay, cool. Can you guys see my screen now? Working now? Thank you, Gerald. Thank you, uh, Etienne. I don't know if I'm pronouncing your right name wrongly or correctly. I'm so sorry. I'm trying my best. Hi. Okay. Thank you, Taufik. Okay, cool. Um, so everyone can hear me. Everyone can see my screen. Before we start, um, I do see a lot of new names today. Can you guys let me know where you guys are from? So I know <laughs> where you guys are from. Okay, um, you guys can reply in the chat box or the Q&A box. Some of you are replying in the Q&A box. Some of you are replying in the chat box. I can see both of it, okay? For those replying in the Q&A box, hello, hello. I'm just seeing your messages now. Okay, India, India, South Africa, South Africa, Nigeria. Malaysia, Philippines, Philippines, um, Singapore, okay, Australia, Germany, England, okay, there's a lot of you, some of you are replying in the Q&A box, for those who are not replying in the chat box, I can still see your message in the Q&A box, so you can just reply wherever is comfortable for you, okay, okay, cool, there's a lot of, um, you guys are from everywhere, so it's nice to meet you. Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to today's webinar brought to you by TickMail, today's Ultimate Forex Trading Masterclass. Um, the reason that this webinar is brought to you by TickMail is to help you guys improve in trading and basically grow your account. Okay, that's the whole purpose of this webinar. So if you guys do have any questions, don't be shy. Ask in the chat box. I'll do an introduction of myself in a little bit. Okay, in the meantime, let's do a disclaimer. Okay, a disclaimer, disclaimer. You guys already know how this works. We go through this every week. Just want to remind you guys that whatever I share in this webinar should only be construed as educational. As educational. Please do not take anything I share as financial advice, investment advice, or any form of advice. Okay, this is not a forecasting group. This is not a signals group. Okay, this is an educational webinar. The whole point is for us to learn and grow as traders, okay? So risk warning, trading CFDs and Forex, especially if you are trading on leverage, carries significant risk and may not be suitable for all investors, okay? So please be careful if you are new to trading, 
especially please be careful even if you're not new to trading even if you've been trading for a long time uh please uh be careful okay because it is a risky business is something you can lose you can lose your a lot of your funds in this game but if you do it correctly you can also make a lot of money out of this game okay so one thing i want to remind you guys is that because to this webinar today there's own there's about 30 plus of you here okay there's 30 about 30 ish so it's not a very big crowd some of my very my bigger webinars it goes to a few hundred okay but today's 30 so i would say today's group is a bit smaller which is good because then you can ask questions and i'll be able to answer your questions without getting too overwhelmed or not seeing too many questions okay so don't be shy ask the questions okay let me do an introduction myself so you trust me a little bit more okay <laughs> My name is Cassandra. You can call me Cass. Um, for those who don't already know me, okay, maybe some of you have attended my webinar before. I do this for you guys every week now. I'm going to do it for you until end of May. So I've got about two more months with you guys. Why so short? Because I am pregnant. I'm going on maternity soon. Okay, so once my baby's here, I will just back off from the webinar so I won't be seeing you guys but in the meantime i've got two months with you guys if you need help with anything please ask in the chat box okay so um for those who don't know who i am i am a prop trader and an investment analyst at everest fortune group so everest fortune group we're an award-winning research firm we're the best we are the finalists for best forex and best equity research for 2019 2020 and 2021 basically what we do is a lot of research we do a lot of research and a lot of back testing so we kind of can from our research and back testing, we kind of forecast where we think the markets are going. And then we advise brokerages, banks, hedge funds, financial institutions, and you guys in this webinars, where we think the market is going. Okay, so other than that, for my own personal trading, uh, I have been trading for quite a few years now. Um, my most notable achievement in trading is that I am a prop trader. So for those who don't know how this prop trading works or how this works, basically uh, I, I prop trade for Everest and also a few prop firms. How this works is that you need to pass a test before you can get funded and before you even enter those prop firms. So those tests is not easy to pass. The passing rate is only 1.5%. Few thousand of people take this test every month and only 1.5% of these people pass. I pass it multiple, multiple times. Um, how I did that is I use technical analysis. So I do specialize in technical analysis, okay? My specialty is technical analysis. So again, if you have questions regarding technical analysis, shoot in the chat box. If it's not technical analysis, if it's fundamental analysis, please don't ask me, okay? I'm not very good in fundamental analysis. I will be very honest with you. Hi, Jamilu. Nice seeing you here. Okay, yeah, some of you are text messaging me on the Q&A. Some of you are messaging me on the webinar chat. I can see both your response, okay? So you can just message me either side, okay? Um, so if you have questions on fundamentals, please don't ask me because I will not be able to, I will not be the best person to ask for this, okay? Technical analysis, go nuts. Just ask me whatever you want to ask. Uh, fundamentals, uh, not so, okay? So today's topic will be advanced RSI and stochastic strategy. Can you guys let me know in the chat box, right? Can you guys let me know in the chat box have any of you used RSI and stochastics before? This is a very popular indicator. I'm sure a lot of you, especially those who have been trading for quite a while, have used it before, but how many of you have used it? Can you let me know in the chat box? Uh, one thing I like to do in my webinars for those who, okay, thank you, uh, Digby, thank you, uh, Etienne. I use it with the MACD and the moving averages. Okay, so MACD is very good. MACD is another kind of oscillator that I use also sometimes, but I really like to use RSI Stochastic. I'm very used to it. Uh, MACD is also one indicator that I can help you kind of give the same thing. Okay, so Jam Jamilu, you, uh, Jam Jamilu used it. Uh, obviously, I wouldn't expect anything less from you, Jamilu. I see you. I, I know you've been trading for a while. I see you in a lot of our webinars. <laughs> um, okay, Bando uses RSI. And 
Sean uses RSI with the moving average. So you guys do use the RSI and a lot of you, one thing that I like your answers is that you use it with other indicators or other strategies, which, which is good, which is what I want to tell you guys. RSI and stochastics, they are very good indicators, but they should not be used on their own. Okay, they should not be used on their own. They should be used accompanied with other technical analysis. Any technical analysis should never be used on their own. They should always be accompanied with other stuff like support and resistance, Fibonacci levels, uh, other indicators that can show you trend, for example, or whatnot. Okay, but never trend line, channels, whatever it is, but do not use an indicator on its own because it will not be able to give you very accurate information. Okay. Um, that's that. Let's start today's. Let's start today's webinar. Do you use it with ADX that you showed a few weeks ago? Yes, I do use it with ADX, and I do use. Uh, I don't use it with ADX nowadays. I just use it with DMI. So DMI is a combination of ADX and uh, the direction. It's called the directional moving indicator. So DMI. I will show you guys later. Okay, for those who are here in my webinar for the first time, I just want to let you guys know, I like to quickly finish my slides. Okay, so I'm not someone who likes like the practical stuff. I, I don't like the theoretical stuff. Okay, I don't like going through the history of an indicator. I don't like going through uh, uh, who created Fibonacci, who created blah, blah, blah. I don't like going through like the theory stuff. I like going into the charts and then we can learn to apply it because we can go through the entire history books of the technical analysis. But if we, if you don't know, if you go to trading view and you don't know how to use it, you will still, it's like you didn't learn anything. Okay. So what is the most profitable strategy you use for your prop trading? I use it every, uh, it's the same strategy that I use every week. I, I think I did show you guys a few weeks ago. Uh, and now I combine it with the Elliott wave. I find the Elliott wave is a very, very, very beautiful indicator. Okay, technical analysis. It's a very beautiful technical analysis, very accurate. Uh, it's amazing. So do you use DMX for Forex or and stocks? Oh, DMI, sorry. Okay, Sean, good questions. I do not do spot stocks. Why? Because remember in the beginning of the webinar, I said I don't do fundamental analysis. I am not good with fundamental analysis. So if you ask me stocks, index, it requires a lot of fundamental analysis. Why? Because these are companies. So you would need to know company performances, a lot of data, a lot of um, profits, a lot of blah, 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 blah. There's a lot of things with companies and stocks. So I don't really trade stocks. I don't really trade index. I do a lot of Forex and I do a lot of gold. Forex, gold, and Ethereum, Bitcoin. Okay, so cryptocurrency, Forex, and gold. Okay, but other than that, I'm mostly a gold trader. I don't really do stocks. So if you have question on stocks, I will not be the best person to be able to answer you. Remember these webinars that we have for you. I can only do my best to share from my own experience. Okay, so hopefully you learn something from my experience and my trading stuff. Okay, so let's start with today's indicator. Again, I want to quickly, as soon as possible. Okay, one thing I like to do in this webinar, I don't mind answering questions because it is productive. It will help you. The whole point of this webinar is to help you grow as a trader. So if you are asking me questions, I can help you answer and I know I'm helping you in some ways, right? So I don't want to spend too much time on the slides. I want to spend more time on, I want to spend more time answering questions and I want to spend more time on trading view because this is where I think you can learn the most. Other than that, the rest is just very textbook, theory stuff, very informational. You can go on Wikipedia. You can get all this information. Do you use smart money concept? Which one of them? A little smart money. I don't use smart money concept, so I wouldn't be able to properly advise you. Uh, Ariane, I really like your name. Very nice name you have. Okay, I wouldn't be able to properly advise you because I don't really use smart money. I know of it, but I don't really use it. Um, Elliott Wave, I find works very well for me. Again, I'm only sharing what has been working for me and the strategy that I've been using. It's impossible for me to share more than what I've been using. Why? Because there's hundreds of ways to trade. It's the same thing. Let's say you want to go from point A to point B. Let's say you want to go from Thailand to Europe, for example, okay, from Asia, you want to go to Europe. There's so many ways you can get to Europe. 
you can take a plane, you can take a boat, you can take, you can cycle there, you can walk there, you can hitchhike, whatever. There's so many methods to get to your destination. Same with trading. There's so many trading style. There's so many methods to be profitable. I am only sharing my trading style and my strategy that I use that has helped me become profitable. So I would say I'm quite profitable and I think things have been working out for me. So I'm just going to share the things that have been working out. Okay. So RSI and stochastics is definitely something I do use. And that's why I'll be very confident to share this topic with you guys today. Okay. So let's start with today's topic and then we can quickly go into trading view. Okay. Again, I can see both your answers on um, Q&A and the webinar chat so you can ask them both and do not be shy to ask okay don't feel like you're asking a stupid question or don't feel like like uh like you're dragging the the team down whatever okay there's no we're here to learn we're here to grow okay so agenda for today introduction to our science stochastics indicator for those who don't already know it we'll just do a very fast and quick introduction where to find the recordings for today and previous webinars okay good question meg um I know these recordings, uh, this vid these webinars are recorded because every time I press that webinar, it says re recording in progress. So I know it's recorded. I guess I'm not very sure where it goes to. If I'm not mistaken, it goes to YouTube. But the best person to find the answer from is from, from TickMill themselves. So go to TickMill and just email them and say, hey, can I get the recordings for the webinar or can you send me a link? So I'm not very sure where it goes after because that is another team that handles the webinar recording. It's another team that handles the uploading of stuff and the setting up of all this, all these back-end things, okay? So please ask them. Um, if I'm not mistaken, someone asked me last week as well and then another one of you answered. So I think someone asked me and then uh, Muhammad, was it? I think Muhammad asked me, told me that it's going on YouTube. Okay, so try YouTube first. Then if you don't get it there, then go on to just email them. They will reply. They're very fast with their replies. Okay, so we're going to do RSI, stochastics. Best settings to use for RSI and stochastics. Obviously, I can finish this very quickly. Uh, sequence strategies in institutions that institutions use and identifying strategies, uh, divergences. Okay, out of these four agendas for today, the most important thing I want you to take away from this webinar is being able to identify divergence. Divergence is the thing that has helped me save so much money in trading, okay? I will show you why when we reach to that topic, okay? But other than that, yeah, I guess get to know what RSI is about, blah, blah, blah. But most important thing, I want you to, the key takeaway, please, please, please know how to use divergence when you're using RSI and stochastic. It will save you a lot of losing trades, okay? It's not gonna tell you Divergence is not going to help you get into trades, at least for me, okay? But it, was, it will help you to stop getting into losing trades, okay? So introduction to R science stochastics. Let's do a very quick introduction. Okay, this is your RSI. This is what RSI looks like, okay? RSI is a momentum indicator, okay? It compares the security strength on the days when price... Okay, I'm going to go very fast with the definition and the introduction and the meaning of, of this if you cannot catch me. Oh, thank you. Thank you, um, um, Shem. So Shem Cristobal, uh, thank you so much. It is on YouTube. So just go on YouTube, take mail global and you'll be able to find the recording. Uh, I love this webinar. So you guys are all so helpful. Okay, I'm going to quickly just do an introduction. If you don't catch what I say, good news is all this definition of stuff, definition of RSI, definition of stochastic, it's all on Google. It's all, it's on the internet, okay? The internet is so useful to you. The thing that I want to focus on today is how to use it, okay? How to use it, how to apply the thing that we have learned, okay? So uh, RSI is a momentum indicator it compares the security strength on days when prices go up to its strength on its days when prices go down relating to the result of this comparison to price action can give traders an idea of how the security may perform so RSI is used in conjunction with other technical indicators that can help traders make better informed trading decisions 
Okay, so why is RSI important? Traders can use RSI to predict the price behavior of a security. It can help traders validate trends and trend reversals. Okay, it can. It can help traders validate trend and trend reversals. But remember, my trading style and what I'm going to share with you guys is how to look for trend reversals and how to avoid getting into lost trades. Okay, there's many, many ways to use one single indicator. We can give the RSI to 10 traders. 10 traders would show you 10 different ways to, to use the RSI. I'm going to show you how I use it and how it has been helping me save a lot of money uh, and how I've been avoiding getting into into losing trades, okay? So it can be point to overbought or oversold, just like the photo, okay? It can provide short-term traders with a buy or sell signals and is an indicator that is used by others to support trading strategy. So using RSI with the trend. So there's different ways you can use the RSI. Um, one thing that I don't like, when I was doing my research on RSI, right? I, I need to, because I need to tell you guys the backstory of RSI and how it works, a little bit of what these numbers mean. Okay, so a lot of websites, a lot of places tells me that when the RSI indicator crosses 30 on the RSI chart, it is a bullish sign. When it crosses 70, it is a bearish, bearish sign. Okay. Uh, that's one thing that I don't like. Okay, this information you can get online. Okay, the other thing that I don't like that a lot of places, a lot of people, a lot of traders actually, even YouTubers, I've watched YouTube videos where they say, oh, if RSI it crosses 70 or it crosses 80, uh, it means that it's overbought. It's time for it to turn down and you enter for a sell. Okay, that's what I've heard. I'm sure those who are researching on RSI and stochastic has heard, heard this before. This is a very common theory that I don't believe in, okay? Another thing is, oh, if RSI or stochastic goes below 20 or 30, which is on the site here, okay? You guys can see on the site here, there's 20 or 30. It means that it's oversold and it's time to enter for a buy because then price is going to reverse and go up, okay? This is one thing. I don't like, and from my own trading experience, I think it's not true as well. Okay, why? So, so the reason why they believe that is because an RSI reading of 30 or below indicates an oversold or undervalued condition. Overbought, overbought refers to security and the trades at a price level above its true in intrinsic value. That means that it's priced above where it should be according to practitioners of either technical analysis or fundamental analysis, trader who see indicators that Security is overbought, may expect a price correction or a trend reversal. Therefore, they may sell the security. Uh, Maring May is saying parameters. Okay, so one thing uh, I'll show you guys later when we go to trade review how I would rather use the RSI instead. Instead of using this 70 and 30 overbought and oversold area, the way that I use RSI is using support and resistance instead. Okay, and support and resistance will tell me when to enter for a sell or enter for a buy. Okay, so uh, this is just all the theoretical stuff, all the textbook definition of all of this. Uh, just take a bit of a pinch of salt, okay? More importantly, later when we go trading view, I'll show you how I use it and how I think it will help you as well if you were to use it. Okay, so this is what um, stochastics looks like. It kind of looks like RSI, okay? So what is stochastics? In technical analysis, stochastics refer to a group of oscillator indicators that point to buying or selling op opportunities based on momentum. So in statistics, the word stochastic refers to something that is subject to a probability distribution, such as a random variable. So in trading, the use of this term is meant to indicate that current price of a security can be related to a range of possible outcomes or relative to its price range over some time period. So how can you use stochastics in trading? The stochastic indicator, just like the RSI, okay, establishes a range of value with values index between zero and 100. A reading above 80 points to a security being overbought and a sell signal reading below 20 and below. Okay, that's the same thing that I told you guys with the RSI. This is what a lot of people believe. Instead, I will show you a different way of using RSI and stochastics. Instead of using 80-20 rule, which a lot of people use, or the 30-70 rule, I will show you the way that I use it. And I've been using it for the longest time and it works really well. So it must be okay. 
right? Because we do a lot of back testing and re research, and from my back testing, I find that using my way works as well. So I will show you guys in a while how, how I use it. Okay. So technical traders can add the stochastic oscillator on top of a securities price chart, which often appears in its own window below the chart. So technically, okay, I'm gonna grab a pen. Let me grab a, a tool. Um, highlighter. Can you guys see that I do I drew an A here. Can you guys let me know if you see how I drew a I, I drew an A at the side of the screen. Can you guys see it? I want to know if this pen is working. For those who see it, can you guys let me know in the chat box? Mm, a lot of you are not responding. Okay, thank you. Okay, a, a lot of you are responding now. I'm guessing there's a delay. Suddenly, there's like 10 people saying yes. Okay, okay, cool. So you guys can see the A, I just wanted to make sure. Okay, how do you use RSI and Stochastics? The way that they use the textbook definition of how they use RSI and Stochastics, which is the 80 and 20 rule, is that when price goes above 80, it is overbought, and therefore you should enter here for sell. So if here is 80 on the charts, you want to enter here for a sell. Okay, so technically, if we're doing if we're doing a uh, back testing here, it kind of works. When it reaches 80, here is 80, you enter here for a sell. Okay, so this makes sense, but it doesn't work all the time. You can see here that this past 80, but here price is still on its way up. So in this case, this 80 20 rule would have failed already. That's why I don't like to use the 80 20 rule because I find that it's not even that accurate. Like, Theoretically, and from the textbook, a lot of people believe in this 80-20 rule, but I think the better way to use this is this way. Okay, let me erase it. I need my eraser. Okay, I'm gonna erase all of this and I'll show you guys. Okay, so instead you can use a Support resistance, I'm super heavy on support and resistance, okay? I live and breathe support and resistance, guys. Um, where's my pen again? I, I lost my pen, okay. So instead, you can see this resistance. Oh no, what's going on? No, no, no. Okay, you know what, guys? Let me just quickly finish these slides, then we can go on to trading view, and then I can draw on trading view because drawing on, on these slides is very difficult. So let me just quickly finish with the slides. I only have like uh, 10 more pages and then we can go to TradingView. So I would have about 20 minutes to practice on TradingView. Okay, best setting to use for RSI and Stochastics. Best settings for RSI is 14 or 21. You guys can remember that. 14 or 21, okay? From my best testing and from research, we find that 14 and 21 works very well. So that's that. Uh, stochastics. Stochastics and uh, look, there's no like settings. There's no default setting that works for every chart. If you go to XAU USD, maybe this setting will work. Maybe 14 will work. But maybe if you go to like, like S&P, for example, maybe 21 will work. So there's no one setting that works for one chart. The best thing to do is actually to backtest and see which one gives you the most accurate results. Okay, that's one. But... For stochastics, what we have found that works with most Forex charts and most, uh, it works very well at XAU, USD, and it works very well with Forex is 21, 5, and 3. Okay. Need my pen. Um, 21, 5, and 3. 21, five and three. Can you guys see that? Okay, so this is a settings that we find works very well on a lot of Forex pairs and it works very well on XAU USD as well. So I cannot give you a number that works well on all charts, okay? Because you will need to adjust your chart and you need to back test to see which one works the best. Yeah, and time, 
time frame, we find that 21, 5, and 3 works so well for most time frames as well. So um, you can just stick with 21, 5, and 3. Jeanette, like on a general, it should be able to work very well. If not the default settings, I will show you the difference between the default settings and the 21, 5, and 3 later when we go to trading view. Okay, so I'm gonna quickly finish this slide so we can go to trading view. I wanna spend more time on, I wanna spend more time on trading view. Let me erase all of this. Okay, secret strategies the institution uses. There's no secret. It's really just uh, support resistance, <laughs> uh, which I'm going to show you guys when we go to trading view. This is exactly the style that we would use when we're using RSI and stochastics. Rather than using the 80-20 rule, rather than using the 70-30 rule, this is the rule that we would use, which is to identify support and resistance and use the support and resistance as our entry for the sell and the buy, okay? Uh, from this picture, you won't really be able to understand. Let me go to um, trading view. I'm almost done with my slides. Okay, identifying divergence. Okay, remember at the beginning of my webinar, I said whatever you do in this webinar, you just need to, like the key takeaway should be your ability to identify divergence. So if you don't already know how divergence work, please take a photo of this. This will help you tremendously. Like even for me, I still refer to this photo when I, I'm looking for divergence because sometimes I get confused. There's so many technical analysis. Like there's no way for one human to remember so many technical analysis. So this picture is a very good picture to illustrate, um, to use as reference when you're looking for divergence. Okay, I'm gonna stay one minute on this picture. Then you guys can, I don't know, take a photo or something. Okay, I have it open on my phone as well so that later when we go to trading view, I can reference it as well. Okay, cool. Basically, okay, if on the charts, price is going up, price is making higher, highs and higher lows if sorry if the charts is making higher highs and higher lows and on the oscillator which is rsi stochastics it's making lower lows and lower highs instead that's basically rsi or stochastics way of telling you that, hey, there is a divergence and the information that you're seeing on the chart, the trend that you are seeing on the chart and the momentum that you're seeing on the chart is fake, okay? It could be a lie and don't follow it, okay? So a lot of times you can do an analysis, like this is my own personal experience, okay? You do an, an analysis, everything is telling you that it's a buy, okay? Everything is telling you it's a buy, okay? I personally have experienced this where I lost like four trades in a row, okay? Everything was showing me it's a buy, so I enter a buy, I enter a buy. But later on when I review why I lost, I actually noticed that RSI and stochastics already showed me that there's going to be a divergence. RSI and stochastics already showed me a bearish diversion, it means that RSI and stochastics already warned me not to get into this buy, but I still got in anyways, and I, I lost that trade, okay? so. Now, because of that experience, every time I do an, anal an analysis, I always end my analysis by pulling out RSI and stochastics, or maybe sometimes MACD as well, because MACD is also another oscillator that you can use to look for divergence. And then if I see a divergence, uh, especially those who always attend my live analysis webinar, you guys always see me end my webinar by pulling out the RSI and stochastics because I'm trying to see if there's a divergence. The minute I see a divergence, I say the same thing every single time. You see a divergence, don't get in. You have two options. You get in at a smaller lot or you don't get in at all. Or you trust the divergence completely and instead of going in for a buy, you're now going for a sell. Okay, so like that's your three options if you see a divergence. The best case scenario is there's no divergence and you just follow on with your plan. Whenever I see there's no divergence, I immediately become like 80% or 90% confident in my trade. The minute I see a divergence, what's the difference between the red and blue line? Um, 
the blue line is the price on the charts and the red line is the price on the oscillator. Okay, so on the charts, it's going up, but on the oscillator or RSI or, or stochastics, price is going down. So that is the oscillator's way of telling you that there is a bearish divergence or bullish divergence. Okay, so this is a little confusing. Let me see. I still have 23 minutes. Okay, we can go to trading view soon. Okay, this is another one. Okay, uh, exaggeration. Exaggerated divergence is another example where on the charts it's making a double top. Okay, on the charts it's making a double top, but on RSI or stochastics it's making like lower lows or lower highs. This is also a form of divergence. So if you guys want to take photo of this, go ahead. Then this is my second last slides, and then we can go, we can go straight into trading view. Okay, so this is what divergence would look like on the chart. So if we're comparing that, uh, the, the blue and the red, blue, just remember, represents the price on the chart. So technically, when you're looking at this photo, price on the chart is going up. But when you're looking at the indicator or the oscillator, price is going down. So this is an example of what it will look like. On the charts, it's making higher highs. But on, that, on the oscillator, it's making lower highs. Okay, which is an indication of bearishness or trend reversal. And this is where you enter for the sell. When you see a bearish divergence, you enter for sell. Number one, you enter for sell. Number two, you stay out. And number three, you believe your other indicators and you go in a small lot. Okay, everyone good? Is anyone lost? I'm going to trading view in like two minutes. This is your time to ask questions. If you do have questions, if you're still lost, where would you enter for the sell? Um, okay, this is why you should never use like stochastics or RSI or any indicator on its own. So just from this photo alone, I wouldn't be able to tell you where to enter for a sell, okay? I would need to combine it with support and resistance. I would need to combine it with trend line, with Fibonacci. Then I can tell you where my entry would be for the sell. Okay, just using this indicator, it will give me an idea that I want to get in for a sell, but then my entry still depends on other things. What is a hidden divergence? Okay, let's go back. Hidden divergence is actually hidden divergence is when it's not very obvious. Um, <laughs> It's basically like your regular divergence, just that it's not very obvious. So the hidden divergence, uh, it's the same as your regular divergence, but when on the charts, it's not very obvious. You might need to zoom in. There's a lot of times where um, I couldn't spot a divergence, but like, use Nikki. Oh, hi, Richard. How many indicators do you use? On average, I use four indicators to confirm my analysis. Use me to get in. Um, usually I need all four confirmation, then I will get in a trade. If not, I'll just stay out because like it's not worth it for me. If something is not worth it, just stay out because if the probability is low, right? You might as well just go to the casino and play blackjack. Like, because playing blackjack in a casino, your chances of winning is like 48% against the casino. But if you are just blindly going into a trade, then your chances of winning is higher in the casino, right? So that's why, that's why trading is not gambling. Trading is calculated risk. From the calculated risk, you decide whether you want to get into the trade. Okay, cool. Uh, I'm gonna like end this so that we can go to trading view because I do see a lot of questions and a lot of your questions are will be better answered on trading view. Okay, just wait a second. I'm going to open trading view so that we can have our practice session. Again, for those who join my webinar often, you know that I don't like to spend a lot of time on these slides. We spend more time on trading view because that's where we can do the application. Okay, just give me one minute to pull up a uh, trading view.
we have 18 minutes. That is a lot of time to practice. Oh, okay. I have GBP USD open on trading view right now. Okay. GBP USD actually has an bearish divergence that I spotted this morning. Okay, I was calling for a buy, then I was like, okay, don't get in for the buy. There is a divergence. It's not worth it. Okay, give me a sec. Can everyone see my screen? Can you guys let me know quickly if you can see my screen? What is, um, can you please confirm settings for RSI again, please? I'll come back to you in a while. Let me just set up the screen. Can everyone see my screen? I am on trading view GBP USD. Okay, no, no, no screen. Okay, let me try sharing again. Um, now, can everyone see my screen? Okay, yes. Okay, thank you, Jamilu. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Ku. Thank you, Salgado. Thank you, Gerald. Um, thank you, everyone. This list is too long. Okay, so let's focus on the screen. I'll show you guys what divergent looks like. Okay, so I spotted GBP USD. I wanted to get in for a buy because why? I'll show you. Every time I uh, enter, yeah, I'm just gonna pull this aside. Oh, yes. yes. Just now there was 30 of you. Now there's 50 of you. So the questions are getting, there's a lot of questions. Oh, I mean, use the Nike strategy, FIP and then so. Uh, yeah, there's one way that you can use it, Richard. Oh, I'm glad that you remember that strategy that I taught, like, I think a few weeks ago. Okay, thank you, Priyan Shu. Okay, um, why did I want to get into GBP USD for a buy? Let me show you. I'm going to start on the daily time frame. Number one, GBP USD is doing this like uptrend thingy. Uh, you can pull out a parallel channel. You can see price going up. Uh, for those who always join my webinars, you know that if price is going up, I always enter for a buy. If price is going down, I want to look for a sell entry. Why? Because I want to follow trend. We do not want to go against the wave. If it's going up, we look for a buy. If it's going down, we look for a sell. It's that simple. Okay, so that means your aim as a trader, your aim as an analyst is number one, identify trend. Number two, identify how strong your trend is. Okay, like it can be going up, but is it going up strongly or is it like doing a very weak momentum up? Okay, number three, identify support and resistance. Number four, identify how strong your support and resistance is. Okay, so I've identified my trend, which is price is going up in this very beautiful channel. It, it, it really is a very beautiful channel. Okay, and then I identified, I identified that this would have been a very nice entry for a buy. Okay, this area would have very nice entry for a buy. Okay, why did I not get in for a buy? Everything looks nice, right? There's a channel, there's a support. There is this, you can take your take profit here. You put your stop loss here. Sorry, the take profit will be here. I'm gonna zoom in because I don't know if it's too tiny for you guys. Okay, is this better? Is this bigger? I don't know if some of you are watching this from your phones. Okay, so this looks, this looks like a very nice trade. You enter here for a buy, that you take profit, but your stop loss here, your risk to reward is about one to four, which is a very good risk to reward, meaning if you have $100,000 account, you risk 1% to make 4%. That's a very good trade, right? So why did I not get in? Because after I pull out the Ichimoku, Ichimoku told me it's a buy. After I pull out the Bollinger Band, Bollinger Band told me it's a buy. Don Chen Channel told me it's a buy. I pulled out the RSI and there was a bearish divergence. Okay, so based on my experience, like I was saying in the beginning of, the, beginning of my webinar, whenever I see a divergence, I don't care what any other indicators is telling me, I immediately stay out. 
that it's not worth it for me to take the risk because there's a virus diversion. Where do you trade and where there, when there's a virus? When do we trade when there's divergence? What price point do we need? Okay, uh, good question, Alvin. So my trading style, I can only share with you guys my own trading style and my own trading experience. From my own trading style and my own experience, if I see a divergence, I do not get in. I, I completely just stay out. Okay, but I do know traders, if they see a divergence, they're like, oh, okay, I didn't, I won't get in for a buy, I'll get in for a sell, then can trade only divergence, make a rule to go counter only just say Nike, Nike strategy of strategy. Yep, that's right, Richard. If you have such a rule on hand, then that is useful as well. Okay, so I saw this buy, didn't get in. I'll show you why, and I'll show you the versions that I spotted. Okay, number one, price is making higher highs, right? We can all agree price is making higher highs. RSI is making higher lows. Okay, RSI is making higher lows. Okay, so here, the easiest way to see is to pull out a vertical line. So you can use a vertical line to highlight all your swings and your swing lows. Okay, based on this. Okay, it made a lower high here. Okay, do you guys see it? I'm going to show it for those who don't see it. See it. You see how it's going down here, but on, on the price itself, it's going up. Therefore, when I see this, this is RSI's way of telling me not to get in because there's a bearish divergence. Okay, the worst part about this GBPUSD is that there's not just one divergence, there's actually two divergence. Okay, other than that, the another way to spot divergence is uh, the other way, which is the hidden divergence, actually. So, hidden divergence. You can see here that price is making higher lows, right? So if we're following this, we're following this trend line and we're following the price here, okay, it makes sense. It's making higher lows. It looks like it's, make, it's making sense. Okay, so it looks like there's no divergence, but I'm gonna delete this, gonna delete this, gonna delete this. So it's clearer for you guys. But can you see on the RSI, price already did a breakout. Don't worry if you cannot spot it. It took me a long time to be able to spot this as well. Okay. If you didn't spot this in the beginning, don't worry. Like it really took me a long time to be able to spot this as well. Like I don't mean like on today's chart. I mean like in trading in general. In the beginning, I had a very hard time spotting divergences as well. Okay, so here it's going up, up, but on the RSI, price already broke out from this ascending trend line. But on the chart itself, this is the chart, this is the graph, price is still moving an uptrend. That's very suspicious, okay? If you ask me, I think very soon, price is going to break out from here. There's a double divergence on RSI. Okay, so I don't know for sure yet, but I have a very strong feeling price is going to break out of this channel and price is going to start with a downtrend, okay, based on RSI. Okay, therefore, when I see this, yes, I can enter for a sell or I can just stay up. I don't want to enter for a sell. Why? Because my initial, my initial analysis was a buy. See, I have a buy entry, I have a stop loss and a take profit. This is my initial analysis, okay? So it's the same as, uh, sorry for those who have heard this story like a million times, okay? Because you guys attend my webinars so often, but for the rest of you who are new, it's the same as going to like, okay, for example, you go to a mall, you see a dress that you like, right? You, right, you see a red colored dress that you like. You don't know if this dress looks good on you. You don't know if you should buy the dress. So you ask your dad for your for his opinion. And your dad is like, uh, yeah, this dress looks good on you. Uh, so you're like, oh, okay, maybe I should get it. Then you ask your mom. Then your mom is like, yes, this dress looks good on you. So 
then you have like double confirmation that this dress looks good on you. You want to get in for a buy. You want to buy the dress, right? Okay. Then after that, you ask your sister. Your sister's a fashionista. She really, really knows fashion. Okay. You ask your sister, does this dress look good on me? Should I buy this dress? And then your sister immediately says, uh, I think the color doesn't look good on you. I think the cutting isn't good on you. I think there are other better dresses out there that you should consider. Don't get this dress. Okay. Immediately, you you totally disregard whatever your parents say and you take your sister's opinion into consideration. Why? Because your sister's opinion weigh more. It, it weighs more because she's a fashionista and she knows more about clothing than your parents. Okay, so immediately you don't buy it. So the same thing, although I think it's a buy, RSI is telling me it's a sell. I don't want to get into this trade because I believe in diversions more than I believe in anything else. Okay, divergence opinion weighs a lot to me because I have already been burned so many, so many times by divergences. Okay, so that's why when I see a divergence, just stay up. Okay, uh, this is one example of divergence. It's happening right now. I don't know if it's going to go up or go down, but based on RSI, it should go down. Okay, but based on everything else, it should go up. So we will find out. Uh, we'll find out tomorrow where GBP USD goes. If GBP USD breaks this channel and goes down, then once again, divergence have won. Okay, I'll show you another example of when um, I use divergence to save myself some money. Okay, let's look at Ethereum. Hmm. Remember the photo I showed you guys just now? which is called a, see, even I need to reference. Okay, it's called exaggerated divergence. Exaggerated divergence is when on the charts, price is going straight, like it's making a lot of double tops, triple tops. This is the fourth top. I think, I don't know if it, this is called a quadruple top, but I may be making this up, but yeah, it's making a lot of tops, okay? But look at RSI. RSI is going on a downtrend. It's going on a very obvious downtrend. This is another example of a uh, divergence. I see like exaggerate. Yep, uh, that's correct, Jamilu. That's exactly what I was trying to point out. There's an exaggerated bearish divergence on Ethereum, showing that the possibility that Ethereum might go down, okay? there is a possibility that Ethereum might go up. But if you pull out every other indicator, every other indicator is showing that Ethereum might go up. Okay, so who do you believe? At this point of time, I kind of believe divergence. So I do expect Ethereum to do a breakout from here and kind of go lower and kind of reach the bottom of this channel. The bottom of this channel, the potential for Ethereum going down is about 1,005 or 1,450. Okay, so we will see if it breaks this channel. If it breaks, then once again, divergence have won. This is a very, this is a very strong bearish divergence. Okay. On the charts, it looks like it's going straight, but on RSI, it looks like it's going down. Okay, so uh that's one very important thing from today's webinar. Today's webinar is that I really, really wanted you guys to be able to learn to spot divergences. Because divergences, I, in my opinion, I feel will save you a lot of losing trades. So I don't use divergences to get in on trades. Rather, I use divergences to stay out of trade. Okay, divergence shows momentum like breath is getting shallower and shallower and more move up exhausted. This means that can either go down or more like make a flag. Um... Good question. Getting shallow and shallow. And more. Okay, good question. This has something to do with momentum already. The question you're asking is momentum. So usually when I am measuring momentum, that's when I pull out another indicator. So every indicator have its own like strength that will help a trader, right? So RSI and stochastics, I use it to spot divergences. I don't use it like 
I don't use it. I don't use it the 80 20 rule, the overbought and oversold rule. I think that is nonsense because there's so many times it's overbought and price just keeps going up, anyways. And a lot of times it's oversold and price just keeps going down, anyways. Okay. I, I use RSI stochastic, mostly the divergence. The indicator that I use to measure momentum is DMI, okay, or at the ADX. This is average directional index. This will tell you the strength of momentum. So ADX doesn't tell you whether price is going up or down, but it tells you the strength of the price going up or down. That means it tells you the strength of the momentum. DMI is a combination of ADX, ADX and direction. So how you use DMI is that if this yellow line, sorry, if this red line, which is the ADX is below, actually I did this webinar with you guys a few weeks ago, right? I think Richard was there. I'm sure a lot of you were there too. I'm sure Jamilu was there. Um, there's like 55 of you in this webinar today. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure at least half of you were there last few weeks ago when I went through this topic, okay? Okay, if anything's below 25, that means the trend is strong, a uh, weak. Okay, so I'm gonna put this at 25. Right now, price is below 25. Uh, the red line is below 25 means trend is weak, momentum is weak. So even if it's bearish, even if it's bullish, it means that it's weak, it's very weak. So let's say you have identified that it's going on an uptrend, okay? Remember, even if you have identified something that are trying, you get in for a buy, you still need momentum to push you to your take profit. If there's no momentum, price will not be strong enough to reach your take profit. You know what I mean? It's like, like, like if you're on a yacht, but there's no wind pushing the sail, then the boat is still not going to move, right? You, if you know what I mean, like the, there's no volume. So, right, a uh, good spot, uh, Richard. So Richard has spotted that. Richard has spotted that the momentum right now is weak. Yeah, so it is weak. Uh, actually, DMI is showing that it's an uptrend. DMI is showing that Ethereum is an uptrend, but it's on a very weak uptrend. So therefore, even more reason for us to believe that it's going to break this, this low. So if under 25, yeah. Under 25 means momentum is weak. Okay, that's the general rule for DMI. Okay, so that's that for RSI and stochastics in terms of spotting divergences. Today, I really like spent a lot of time identifying divergences. Um, I know like time has reached, but I really want to cover this because I covered divergences, but I didn't even cover like the most basic thing of RSI and stochastics which is support and resistance. Okay, so let me just spend like three minutes covering this. Hey, remember I said I don't use the 80-20 rule or the 30-70-30 rule because I think it's it's rubbish. Okay, so the rule that I use is that once I have spotted my... Um, support and resistance. Okay, I'll show you how beautifully this works. It works very, very well. Okay, I'm gonna have to use, okay. So let's pretend this part here hasn't happened, okay? We're gonna pretend this hasn't happened. I'm gonna use the replay button, okay? I'm gonna replay, I'm gonna cut this away. This has not happened, okay? Nobody knows what's happening. Oh, I'm not allowed to use it because my trading view is a free account. Okay, guys, we're just gonna pretend this area that I marked red has not happened, okay? Okay, so even though it has not happened, I've identified that there's a resistance here, okay? So in my mind, I know that this is the highest point that price has ever been to on the stochastics. Okay, let's pull back, pull back. It has never gone above 96. Okay, so 96 is a very strong resistance area. That's as high as stochastics can go for now, okay? So I'm gonna identify this as resistance. The next time price comes to this 96 area, 95 area, this area that I spotted, that's where I want to prepare to get in for a sell. Okay, that's where I want to get in for a sell. Same if I'm identifying from the bottom. Okay, if I'm identifying from the bottom, 
if I have identified that this is a very strong support, the next time price comes here, I want to get in for a buy. So look, like I didn't plan this, okay? We just randomly chose a chart and this happened, okay? This is Ethereum, okay? We spotted this swing high here. The idea is that next time that price comes to this swing high area, I'm going to enter for sell. Look, price came here. On the chart, it came here. If you enter here for a sell, you would have been able to make quite a very, um, quite good profit. Okay, what time frame does this work? It works on all time frames. Okay, it works on all time frame, mostly on uh, one hour and four hours and daily. Okay, if I tell you it works on all time frame, like one minute, three minutes, five minutes, okay, then I'm lying. Sorry, it doesn't work on all time frame. It works on all time frame that I have tested. Okay, so the, test, the time frames that I've tested is the one hour, four hours, and the daily. Uh, it works very well and on this three time frame. Anything below that, if it's a 15 minutes, the five minutes, or three minutes, I personally have not done back testing on it. I personally have not tried it on those time frames, so I cannot advise you if it works well or not. Okay, but I know for sure, for sure, it works very well on the one hour, the four hours, and the daily time frame. Okay, so you see, the idea is that when Stochastics come here a second time. I'm going to get in here for a sell. True enough, Stochastic makes a high here and makes a turn back. If I enter here for a sell, I would have been able to catch a very nice sell trade. Okay, second one. Okay, I have identified that this is a strong support area. I marked it. So I tell myself the next time on the Stochastics, price comes back to this area, I'm going to enter for a buy. True enough, when price gets here, price makes a swing low. If you entered for this buy here, you would have made quite a bit of profit. Actually, you would have made a lot of profit. You would have made like, what is this? This looks like, this is like a $300 move up. Okay, so this is the other way that you can use stochastics and RSI. Other than divergence, this is the other way. So remember in our webinar, I said that uh, how strict, secret strategy that... um institutions use this is a secret strategy okay it's not that secret but yes this is the strategy that they use identify support resistance use the support and resistance to enter for your buy and sell okay um sorry can i ask you one more thing is it one hour time frame yes it can work on the one hour time frame uh same for stochastic same for rsi do you have a youtube on how to do back testing no i do not have a youtube but you guys can add me on Telegram. I'm going to create a chat, okay? A lot of people add me on Telegram. If I don't reply, it's because I'm pregnant. Okay, I tell you guys this all the time. I tell you guys this every week. You add me on Telegram. If I don't reply, it's because I'm pregnant and I'm tired and I'm sleeping most of the time, okay? But when I have time and I have energy, I will reply, okay? So you can add me there. Then eventually, I'll add you guys all in the group chat. We can ask me lots of questions. Yeah, that's right. That's right, Muhammad. Okay, so um, for those who want to add me, you can add me. For the rest of you, thanks for joining. I will catch you guys again next week. Again, I'm only going to take you guys for the next two months and then I'm going to go on maternity leave. So the next, you have two months to like bombard me with questions. Only ask me technical analysis, okay? Don't ask me fundamental analysis because I'm not the best person to ask for fundamental analysis. Okay, thanks guys. Bye. Take care. Bye. Uh, thanks, Meg. Thanks, cool. Thanks, Salgado. And thanks for the rest of you joining. I'll catch you guys again soon. Okay, thanks, Jamilo. I'll probably catch you on Wednesday. <laughs>